Um, my friend uh, Frank Hernandez, one of my um, one of my cohorts from the Saturday Tutor Art class. He was from State Street and between uh, Marengo and at that time it was Brooklyn Avenue. He said, hey Leo, there's this place, there's this nun, Karen, she's got this place, it's like art. I said, oh yeah, okay. What was that, 70, 71, around there? And I went with him uh, on a weekend and we climbed the stairs and between uh, uh, what was it, St. Louis Street and uh, what's the other street? Uh, St. Louis and can't remember Chicago. That's right, <laughs> you know. So we went upstairs to the third floor, and sure enough, there was this large dance hall with a really wrecked floor. Uh, the rain had gotten in, and a stage, and then all these little cubicles. And I said, wow, check it out. Then I meet these older Mexican artists that were there. It turns out to be uh, Bueno and Ibanez. They were the two gay Mexican artists. And well, I could tell. And I said, hey, how you doing? I'm doing I go, cool. And they were making these beautiful uh, prints. There was Sister Karen. Uh, and they're somewhere at the SEMA, University of Santa Barbara. But nonetheless, um, you know, I'm still in high school. And I think I was still in high school at that time. And then Frank introduces me and this is Sister Karen. Hi, how are you? She's already smoking away and it's like, oh cool, nice. I'll see if I can come back. Never went back. Went down the street to uh, this other place. Uh, what was it called? Um, nations, All Nations, that's what it's called. It was this little place, uh, little gym type of thing that they had there at that time uh, on uh, Brook. Uh, what is that, Solo Street in Brooklyn, and I met Manuel Cruz, and lo and behold, years later, Carlos Almaraz painted the whole walls with this beautiful depictions of the farm worker movement, and all that kind of stuff, and years later, they knocked the building down, and there's nothing there, and now they've built a new gym, and well, anyway, but that's how I started with Sister Karen, and self Graphics. graphics. Um, uh, went off into the world, um, came back in 1970s, the latter part of 76, and someone said, hey, self graphics. I said, huh? Carlos Almanas and the boys, you know, they had had their thing while I was away in the army. Uh, their little art show, the Los Four Guys formulated, and I used to be with them. I could have been Los Five, but nonetheless, it was okay. I said, what's going on here? They said, oh, there's the, the, they're holding their uh, third or fourth uh, Dia de los Muertos celebration. I said, what the hell is that? I'll go. I've only been back in L.A. like two or three days. My niece is born, Yvette, my sister Tomasa. And then I show up to the cemetery, and they're still in that same location, self Graphics, graphics, right there on Brooklyn Avenue and between you know Chicago and St. Louis Street. And, you know, I show up with this, this wreath that I made out of ivy, right? And I'm going like this to everyone, hey, bless you, bless you, bless you, I'm back, I'm back. <laughs> and I saw it and I got real excited. People, you know, and they're in a procession. Which cemetery did they go to? Uh, Evergreen. From Evergreen. And I said, fantastic, and they're not coming out of the normal gate, right? On uh, Evergreen, they're coming out of the, I guess it was the third street or fourth street. And they're coming up, and I'm like, wow. I got there on time, because I was standing around for quite a while, and I'm seeing people dressed up in dead wear, you know? And I said, hey, this is cool, and then, hey, next year for sure. And so we go up to the South Park Graphics and I go back and, Hi, Sister Karen. Do you remember me? I, I came here with Frankie. She goes, Oh, Frankie, where is he? We didn't know. We didn't know. But um, uh, that's where I saw South Park Graphics again. They were in the same spot, but now the cubicles were interesting. They had a 
screen print shop area there and Richard Duardo was doing things there. I think he was doing things there. And then they had um, a gallery. They were still setting up a gallery. Linda Vallejo was there. And uh, the two uh, artists, the gay artists, they had left. And um, that's more or less what I remember. And then I remember this this blue van, big old thing, said Barrio Mobile Art Studio in the parking, parking lot. So lo and behold, uh, I did come back, uh, I don't know, a few months later, around August or September with Carlos Almaraz and Frank Romero to talk about a uh, Dia de los Muertos um, event. And I, I think I had uh, participated in, a, in an art show called Banners and something. What was it? Paper and Banners? Anyway, at Mount Sack in Pomona, I think it is. They had a show, Los Four and Friends. And I was, I was a friend. I said, oh, cool. And uh, I met uh, Judith Hernandez, right? And I found out she's one of those four now because Bethel's not around and Magoo, he's somewhere, you know, but he had left up for uh, Fresno to go teach up there. And so um, it was cool. You know, I go to this meeting and I volunteered, as I always do, to... Um, create a float, a vehicle float, for this show, <laughs> and then there's photographs somewhere of uh, the float, you know, Leo's float, Alo, a, Alo Los Four, you know, big giant skull with spray can, with glitter, Los Four, in the front, and then uh, Carlos Salamanas did a lead in the Guadalupe, that I put on top of the cab, and then the back it was, I built a uh, well, there was this rack system I had, and we put flowers and things. And uh, back then, my girlfriend, my girlfriend Margie, she uh, was very provocative. Put this thing on, low cut, really looking real nice. And she had sempaso uh, sheetles, the day of the dead flowers, the golden marigolds, in the back, which she was throwing them on to the crowd. And uh, we made the float at Frank's house. Frank's mom had a lot to do with the paper flowers that were put around it. And uh, I had no realization as to getting from uh, Echo Park to Salvo Graphics. Not that far away, but I had to drive like two miles an hour. Because the Viridian and the Guadalupe would kind of go back, hey, you're going too fast. Hey, <laughs> And the things are like kind of falling off here and there. Ah, oh, slow down! I'm not hurt in the back. And Margie was yelling, and I go, "Okay." And uh, we made. Uh, she helped me make two mannequins. You know, the dead couple right next to me. I had a pair of overalls. We stuffed it. It was this guy like this with his arm over his behind like this, and inside her bra, and he's holding a tequila bottle right here like this, and she's got her hand on his tequila bottle. Very provocative, right? Mm. <laughs> but and then skull faces and wigs, and then Margie had a pair of nylons. We stuffed with a bunch of rags as this woman's legs and <laughs> high heels. It was funny, but you know, people saw it and oh, look what they're doing. Some people caught it, you know, a lot of people didn't. <coughs> so we, we got to the 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 procession late. And we, we had plenty of time, but when we found out we got her, had to drive very slow, we didn't realize. So we get there to the corner of Brooklyn Avenue and Evergreen, and the, <clears throat> the Teatro Campesino guys were just coming up to the top of the hill. Turn it around! Lead us! Lead us! <laughs> Turn it around. <laughs> and I led the parade. Beep, 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 beep. There's a cop car in front of us. Beep, beep, beep. I just loved it. I was finally able to honk at the cops. <laughs> All I wanted. He couldn't do nothing about it. <laughs> oh yeah, I just let him have it. And then Marjorie was throwing things out. <coughs> the Afro Campesino, you know, the Luis Valdez people were there and they were dressed up. To the max and, they, and Michael and Mesco and Linda, I guess, and, and workshops. They had made a lot more figurines, big ones, and it was like, wow. 